Hello everyone and welcome to one of the best series in this channel which is the submissions, the portfolio review. Today we are going to kickstart January with some very good uh, portfolios. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 portfolios. So an excellent number to kickstart things. Now, before we start, just a quick announcement. I'm probably going to be covering all of them today, since uh, I think there's uh, <laughs> there's enough time to 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 do all of them. As always, I'm going to start with the one that was submitted first, and then we'll go through the rest of the portfolios. If you missed this one, don't worry. We do this every single month, so you can submit for next month. I'm actually going to open the submissions as soon as the video is over. The title here is going to change to next two submissions, February, and anything that's submitted from the end of this video uh, all throughout uh, January and the first half of February will be covered on the next portfolio review. So yeah, let's start with uh, Agyegi. I'm sorry, guys. Sometimes with the names, I, I have a really, really hard uh, time. Agyegi, I think it's called. Um, let's take a look. So let's read the letter first. And it says, hi, Abraham, please look at my renders. <laughs> I will, my friend. I will. You can give me more information if you want. It's not necessary, but it's always... Um, it's always uh, helpful. Okay, so, so it's a download and it's a little bit heavy. So I'm going to go to the next one, to Dennis. And uh, let's take a look at Dennis. And then we'll go back to you, my friend. So it says, hi, Abraham. Happy New Year and Merry Christmas. Good health and all the best to you and your family. To you as well, my friend. You've already sorted out my portfolio. Thank you. I removed some of the content and added a survivor model for your course. And also added models of a device, a staff, and a fantasy sword. With the best wishes, Dennis Vykov. Nickname Mjutu is Mac. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I know you, my friend. There you go, Denis Vyko from Russia. Perfect. Ooh, dude, you nailed this guy. Nice, nice, nice. I love it. You you did something really interesting here. You changed the face structure slightly, and he looks a little bit older than the than the concept piece and then the one that I uh, normally uh, or the, the one that I do on the on the course. But this looks great, man. Clean objects, clean textures. I think the jacket is a little bit too glossy. Unless it's made out of plastic, I would expect the roughness to be a little bit lower. I do remember that I did mine like quite a bit high on the glossiness as well. But that's one of the things that I would change. Like I know here in the concept, we do get this like shine to it. Uh, but I think this still looks a little bit too plasticky. So I would probably bring it down. But great job, man. And you've been posted, which is not easy. Not easy, uh, but you nailed it. Great, yeah, that's a, that, that's that's an amazing one, my friend. Really, really good. Let's take a look at all of the other pieces. So you said you added this sword. Oh, I really like it. Not a huge fan of the render, I'm gonna say. The model looks fine. Um, here's where we need to be a little bit more careful in the details. So I'm not sure how long it took you. Uh, I understand that it says right here was for a practice for the pipeline. So I know that you that you know your pipeline because you, you finished the survivor one. If you finish the survivor project, you pretty much know uh, the basics of all of the process. So here we need to be a little bit more careful about the details. So for instance, I can see that the stitches here, this like cores, are not crossing all the way through. This could be due to a bake issue or it could be because of a modeling issue. And in either of those cases, we definitely need to fix it. Uh, the skull also looks a little bit flat. In here, it doesn't look... That bad, it actually looks quite nice. But then when we see more light, uh, it definitely shows that there's a couple of areas that that would change. I can also see that you're using the metal edge wear, but it's everywhere. And we've talked about this quite a bit. If you've uh, been a fan of the channel, uh, channel, and I know you have been, you know that with the with the metal edge wear, it's always a good idea to remove some of that metal edge wear in certain areas so that it looks like it's more damaged in like specific parts of the, of the element. But there, that, that looks good, man. And let's take a look at this. The magic staff. Okay, simple, clean. This is a kind of project that I would probably combine with a couple of other elements because by itself, it doesn't look as impressive. Uh, it looks very clean and I like the render. This is a really nice render. I would probably push push the lights a little bit higher because it's it, it looks a little bit underexposed. Uh, but yeah, like try to do, like I, I like the, the concept of that piece. So you could try doing like, I don't know, like that's the magic staff. Let's do like a magic hat. Let's do like a magic book. And then if you put all of those elements together, you get a more, um, a, a stronger, a stronger uh, piece. This looks really good. Nice. It's like a Walkman. See the Walkman? Like the one from... Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, this looks good. Render is good. Textures could be a little bit dirtier, especially like the red plastic is very flat. Here's where I would definitely add a little bit of metal edgeware um, to, to change a couple of things. But uh, overall, 
nice job man nice job I, I feel like these four projects are really strong probably this two right here this one i would add more objects to support it and this one i would definitely tweak it a little bit before you have it here in your portfolio because uh you can take a look at this axe right here and this is really really strong like this is a really nice concept really nice render really nice textures and then you compare it to the sword and it looks a little bit weird right like why were you able to do a really nice project right here and not right here so all of the skills that you use on this one you need to transfer them to this one so that you get the best possible result and uh, yeah, I think that's it uh, for this one. Thank you, Dennis, for, for your submission. Now, if anyone else is watching this portfolio and being like, oh, I want to learn what Dennis is learning. He's doing some of the uh, like things that we've been doing. We do have the Epic Bundle available. Hey, guys, we have some great news for you. We know how important it is to prepare yourself and keep learning amazing skills to improve your portfolio. And that is why we're offering a super epic bundle of our best 50 courses for you. This epic bundle is available through ArtStation. It contains all of the videos and project files for our top 50 courses. We have modeling, sculpting, rendering, rigging, animation, Maya, characters, creatures, props, substance painter, ZBrush, and Real Engine. All of the topics that we've been covering in the past years are going to be there. Our top 50 courses are going to be included in this bundle. This bundle is at a super price with an amazing 80% discount. And we will have this bundle available throughout the January. So, if you are wanting or you want to have some very nice new year resolutions, if you want to increase your 3D levels and you want to become a master at the 3D art, then this is your opportunity. Make sure to check the link down below. Very well, so let's continue now with our good friend here, Ajeja. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that properly. Uh, where do I uh, unplug this? Let me, let me create a folder here for you on my desktop. And I'm going to... Practice. Come on. There we go. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Background. Okay, this is the reference. Um, is this the reference or the re Okay, that's the reference, and this is your render. Okay, first thing I know this, lights. And this is one of the most difficult things. Or not difficult, but I, I do believe when you're a student, when you're a beginner student, you don't think that it's as important. That's what I did when I was a student. And the lights. So if we compare this to the original reference that you have right here, we can immediately tell that the colors are way too dull, right? So you can see on this guy right here, look at the background. This is almost white, and this is a middle gray. So we definitely need to either change the colors of the textures. We need to be very... Um, we need to, to really analyze our reference to match it as close as, as possible or, um, or just tweak the, the textures and stuff. Now, I, I think you did capture the, the essence of the project, but it's really, really, really different from what we're seeing here. Like the proportions are not as in line to what we see right here. You can see, for instance, the curvature on this thing does not match the curvature on this thing. The softness of this like donor right here, this is very low poly. You can definitely give it a smooth subdivision and you're gonna be fine. There's a lot of like, there's very like low poly versions. Now, I don't have enough information. I would need to, of course, talk to you to know whether or not that was the intention because maybe your intention was to create a low poly like a more game-friendly version of this thing, which I, I'm, I'm guessing this thing is definitely like a heavy uh, commercial piece, like the, the amount of subdivision levels that it has and maybe even materials might be a little bit too big for a game. And this one could work for a mobile game, for instance. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that we need to be careful about. My best advice, my friend, is grab specific parts of the element and try to match them as close as possible. For instance, the little like thing right here, try to match the roundness, try to match the shininess of the material. Then we can do the little lamp and little by little, you can complete and, and like finish pretty much everything. I do like the fact that you got several renders out of this, which is great because having multiple renders is a good option. Um, I can see that you know about UVs. Usually you don't need to pack every single thing into a UV. Like you, you did it here, which is, which is why I think that you were trying to like optimize or, or minimize the amount of polygons, but you don't really need to do that. And at the same time, it's a little bit uh, like, uh, I can see that the on, the on the wireframe of these things, some elements are really low poly, like, uh, like the... Uh, roof right here and then you have some really high density meshes for some of the planks so you always want to have a like a relatively uniform uh, amount of topology everywhere i think it's a good project i probably wouldn't add it to the portfolio just yet but it's uh it shows me that you know the the process for you being and stuff there we go now we're talking okay 
So this renders look, the clay renders look really good. I think you forgot to do a shade smooth on the on the car here or a, a subdivision because like you shouldn't be seeing all of this faceted faces everywhere. And it's weird because you don't have them like on the ambient occlusion <laughs> render. Like the ambient occlusion render is really clean or at least cleaner and everything else is a little bit uh, weird. So so make sure you do the proper subdivisions everywhere, unless you're going for this like very low poly look. Um, it's not a bad model. I can I can see the topology. This is actually a really good topology, but you need to smooth it. Uh, I, I'm not sure why you are not smoothing it. Again, if uh, we had a little bit more information, I might be able to give you a little bit of a better feedback, but uh, you definitely need to smooth. There's a couple of questionable decisions in regards to the poly, like, like on this glass right here. Um, I've never seen this a specific concept before, but yeah, like smoothing and adding a sub a, a smooth uh, normals, it's a very common issue. I think you were I, I think you're doing it in Blender. Is it Blender or Maya? Oh, it's Maya. Okay, I'm gonna show it in Blender real quick. There we go. So inside of Blender, when when you add an object such as for instance like a sphere, and Maya has the same thing. This is like for all of the all of the softwares out there. You get this, where you see each faceted face. In Blender, you just right-click and say Shade Smooth, and that gives you a smooth subdivision. And then, of course, on top of this thing, you add a subdivision surface, which in Maya is the number three, and that's how you get like a really soft element, which is why I was suggesting for the life uh, saver on the um, on the other scene. Um, in Maya, you're gonna find that in this menu right here, which is uh, the Mesh Display menu. It's Mesh, dif mesh Display Soft and Edge. Make sure you do that, because otherwise, things are gonna look faceted, and that's that's not something that you want. And this is great. It's a kit. Uh, you can build like robots or, or like a special like uh, I don't know like yeah pieces and stuff. Topology wise, is 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 not. I'm not sure if it's ready for sub diff. Um, it kind of looks like it is. Again, I would love to see it subdivided because even on this like renders. <coughs> oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong screen. <coughs> oh my god. Uh, even on these renders, you can see that uh, you can see that the eight-sided sides to the whole thing. It's fine for a game where you want to keep things low poly, but nowadays, I've mentioned this before, polygons are no longer the bottleneck, so you can definitely go a little bit higher. Uh, of course, if you subdivide by this, it might be. Oh god! Oh my god! <laughs> ha! Damn! Of course, if you subdivide by it, it might be a little bit too much for this particular pieces. It's not a bad kit. I would love to see you assemble something out of this kit. I I've seen a lot of people offering this kits in our station and uh, 3D total stuff like that. Give me one second. I went outside to get a package and allergies are just kicking in. I'm going to have to <laughs> go take my meds probably. But yeah, I was saying that it's important that you can do these kits. But it's also very important that you can make something out of these kits that, makes, that will... Uh, that will translate to someone who's looking to buy this kit to know it's going to help them know that you can build something. There we go. So yeah, make sure you can build something out of this kit, my friend, and uh, and go for subdivisions. Don't don't stay with low poly stuff. It's it's good to know how to do low poly stuff, but you're also going to need high uh, poly count stuff for for portfolio uh, purposes. Let's now go with uh, Madim. Take a look. Hello, hello. This is Madi from Tunisia. My God, I was talking to one of my students and I was telling them, you know how impressive this thing is with um, uh, with the internet being able to to pretty much like know people from so many places. Look at that, Tunisia. I knew it was in Africa. <laughs> I'm not that lost, but I wasn't sure exactly where. So yeah, amazing. I have friends. Uh, my my best friend lives here in Bari, so you're really close to him. But yeah, like with this channel, my friends, we've been able to to meet so many people from everywhere. So it says, uh, my name is Madi from Tunisia. I was following your channel for a long time now, and this is the first time I uh, saw this portfolio submission link. So here we go. I'm mainly focusing on creating realistic characters, but in my hard drive, I have a lot of unfinished game characters that I could not finish, and I'm currently working on another one. Hopefully this time I will finish. So yeah, thanks again for the videos and hope to see more. Of course you will see more, my friend. Let's take a look. Madi Van Ruma. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Cool. So first impression, good. I like this. There's a lot of sculpting, which is good. Uh, and there are some finished pieces. I can definitely see a couple of pieces that are not as strong as others. 
Uh, so I'm going to be focusing on the ones that I think are a little bit stronger, okay? So this guy right here, for instance, this um, the centaur, looks okay, but there are a couple of anatomy issues, especially on the horse. The character itself is not that bad. I would definitely like work a little bit more on the face of the of the character, like the forms of the face look a little bit weak. Actually, no, the, maybe it's the texture or the shading, because it, it looks really good here on the clay renderer, but then over here, I don't particularly love it. Um, also, again, I think the proportions on the on the horse are a little bit... He looks really big. I think that's it. He looks really big compared to the horse body. And that makes it look a little bit weird uh, from my uh, from my perspective. Uh, this Pelé one that you did, this is great. I think this looks really nice. I think you're capturing the likeness nicely. We can, of course, always improve. Um, the main things that I'm seeing here is you're doing very long lines here on the wrinkles and uh, in the character courses that I teach, I've always mentioned this sort of like crisscross technique that you can use. He looks very symmetrical. So try, try doing not as much symmetry and, uh, and you might find, uh, you might find a little bit more success there because I can definitely see a little bit of more, a lot of symmetry, like on this area, you, you definitely want to avoid the symmetry on this, like wrinkles that we get on the on the inside of our of our nose, uh, because it's very obvious. Uh, there's a rule that says that whenever you depart from the center line, it's easier to hide the fact that you're using symmetry. But as you get closer, it gets a little bit more complicated. Also, careful on your skin shader. I'm not sure uh, if you are using a skin shader or not, but it doesn't, uh, it kind of looks like a little bit. So you can see a little bit of the red thing here, but I don't see it as much on other parts. If you're using a mask, be careful how strong that mask is, because I, I would definitely like to see a little bit more life to the to the um to the whole thing. Okay, now uh here here's one small tip. I'm not sure how many characters you've done. I know you mentioned a lot, but usually I don't recommend always using base meshes because when you use base meshes, you inherit a lot of things or a lot of problems from the base mesh that could be difficult to navigate later on. But I love this process. This looks this looks great. I actually think this render, like this one right here, looks better than this one's. I'm not sure what changed on the skin, but this skin looks a little bit more realistic than this one's uh, down here. Um, but that's just my personal personal opinion right there. I'm also against AI generated images that steal copyright, so I support you there. This looks really good. I like this one. Let's take a look. Yeah, like the detail on the pores and everything, that's really good. Uh, careful on the hairs. I know you're using, I think you're using action for the hairs. They look, they usually hair gets thinner and it looks a little bit thick on certain areas. It's not bad. I, I, again, I think, oh, this is a really good one. Really cinematic, nice. Yeah, I think it looks very even. Like, usually hair is a little bit crazier and everything looks a little bit too even. I would probably add some extra noise um, noise uh, notes on the on the action to, to make it look a little bit better. And this chest plate, not bad. But again, I think it kind of... Like, you have a really realistic character. And then, again, the proportions. I think he should be a little bit wider on the, on the shoulders. He looks... Like, look at how my shoulders look on, on, on the camera right here. And he looks really long on the neck, and then they go down like this. So, so you need to, to like push the shoulders up because uh, I I can't I can't even bring my shoulders that low. You know what I mean? Like like look at the at the curvature that you have on the shoulders. The, there there's no way like to to look like, move my arms and get the exact specific like roundness, and that's really making the character look a little bit off on specific on on that specific area. Um, I see you're doing a lot of well, like bust studies. I think you you still need to, or I would suggest that you still do more full body studies, like this guy right here, um, so that you can practice the whole anatomy. And the, try doing a full character with more props. Uh, I just finished the, the demon character, well, a couple months ago, we finished the demon character one, which has a lot of props. I think something like that, like the demon character, like the soul deer, all of those are perfect ways to practice doing very, very complex stuff. Um, also, you mentioned that you're doing things for video games. I don't see a lot of low poly stuff here. It's a lot of like Maya and render, so that's why it's important to do that as well. Hair for video games is slightly different. Yes, nowadays with Unreal Engine 5, we can do things that are a little bit more advanced, um, but for other engines, you might not be able to do that. You need to learn how to do hair cards as well, which I know it's not as fun, uh, but we do have a course about that one as well. Hopefully, my uh, style of teaching is a little bit more interesting and you can learn it as well. So yeah, good job, Madi. Good job. Let's go with Amrinder Singh. 
He says, hello, I'm a Mrinder Singh. I'm currently a student and studying 3D for quite a while. I made this project and I would love to take a review on it from your software. Used our Marvelous Blender and Substance Painter. Take a look at the final render. Okay, okay. Not bad. Uh, it's a really complex scene. It's a lot going on. I think there are a couple of things. Like, I love the fact that we have... Uh, like this neon and the fog and everything. The character looks quite proportionate. It looks quite nice. The sword looks a little bit wonky. Uh, what I mean by wonky, it's, it, lo it looks like just a sheet of uh, like metal. It kind of looks like the Attack on Titan sword. So I don't know. It's a little bit weird. We'll see the works in progress. Um, but yeah, now compositionally wise, there's a couple of things that don't make a lot of sense. Uh, for instance, there's this like floating hand over here. This guy right here, this uh, sort of... Um, a uh, little roof thingy, it's attached to the wall with what? It's just like a beam, so you always want to have like some 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 sort of support and bolts. Like those are like the details that you really really need to pay attention to. And I know that it was a, a like a like a complicated thing to go for such a big scene, but if you're gonna go for a big scene, you need to to spend enough time to make sure that the scene looks as nice as possible. Now, also, I'm not sure what type of rendering you're using. It, kind of looks to me that it might be Eevee if you're using Blender. And the reason why I say that, especially like back here on those like chairs, I don't see the shadow of the chairs on the on the ground. It looks a little bit flat. I'm not sure if that makes a lot of sense, but take a look at the cinematic scene that we're doing now. Uh, we, we uploaded that video yesterday. And uh, inside of Maya, when using like a traditional ray tracing en engine, we can get things that look a little bit more, you know, realistic, okay? Uh, let's take a look at the character whip. Let me. I'm just gonna open this off off camera to make sure we don't have any nudity. Okay. Okay. So um, here's the deal. This thing is fine. Like the the clots are fine. The pants are fine. The jacket. It's a little bit. That's a really big hoodie right there. The face of the character looks a little bit off, but if it's not going to be, or if it's going to be covered and stuff like that, we can get away with it. That's fine. I love the mood board. I, I definitely understand what's the inspiration you're going for. Um, yeah, this is, this is, this is pretty nice. But yeah, the face, I think we're not there yet. I'll probably give it another pass to the, to the face. Says so this Mars. uh... <laughs> okay, so uh, this is this is interesting, and sorry, I'm not laughing. Uh, uh, like I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but it, it makes sense now. You say this is your first time doing a character. This is why I always mention: whenever you try to do a project, you should try to divide it into smaller chunks. Okay, I I, I did the same thing, and I can show you a couple of the first characters that I did, and they look not as great as the ones that I, I can do right now. So my first suggestion to you, my friend, before you try to do the whole scene. Right, like if, before you try to like complete all of these things, because now, now I think that this character that I'm seeing right here, it might be a character that you got somewhere, um, like a, like an asset from I don't know, character creator or something. So my my recommendation would be try to do a bust first. So 3D sculpt bust. Okay, so try to nail the bust of the character first. Okay, the face, the hair, everything. And then from there, we can learn all of the next things that we need to do, such as retopology, texturing, all that stuff. If you've been able to generate like uh, this result without having any previous like knowledge, like this result right here, then I, I really applaud you because it's it's complicated. It's not easy to do it. Now, I'm not sure if this character right here is the one from Marvelous Designer. If it is, then you need to do your character first before you do the clots because the clots are going to feed your character. This might not be the the character that you're gonna go for um but yeah um again i might suggest some of the courses that i've done such as the um the advanced character course the the demon character course the soldier character course all of those courses teach the basic pipeline on how to create a character and hopefully with those you can get a little bit more um experience because yeah tackling is such a complex piece like this it's it's definitely definitely difficult i'm gonna give you one example there's um song kong 3d art there's this myth, right? Like Sun Wukong, everyone knows it, the Monkey King. Well, I have a character in D&D. &D. Uh, he's not Sun Wukong, but he's a, a monk. He's a, a, a Banara monk, so he's a, a monkey. And um, I've always 
like I, I've never done him in, in 3D uh, as of yet. Like after 10 years of doing or a little bit more than 10 years of doing 3D, I still have not attempted to do him because I know that the amount of time and, and skill that I need to get there is uh, it's too much. Like I will need at least four months full time to realize the character exactly how I'm picturing him. So if I wanted to do something, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to do the whole character right now. If I wanted to do something about that specific character, I'll probably just do a bust or I'll probably just do the weapon or something because I know that that's something that I can complete in the time that I have available right now. But, um, and the thing is for this one, like if, if this is your final goal, that's great, but let's focus on smaller pieces first. And as you get better and better at 3D art, you're going to be able to, um, to get there uh, or, or to achieve your goal in a, in a better way. Okay. So let's now go with Ariane Sony. Let me just check, because I just got a message. The hell? Let's just check this one right here. Arian says, hey, Raham, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I've met this environment one month ago. You have, might have seen this several times already, but everyone's unable to check it out due to the competition guidelines. But here it is now, finally on our station, which is not so organized for now, okay? And you are, um, you've attached some works in progress. Let's take a look. Yeah, Arian showed this thing uh, in one of the streams and I accidentally gave a glimpse on the screen and there was a competition. This is amazing, dude. Like this is so much work. <laughs> like I can't imagine how long it took you to do this. It probably took you like quite a bit of hours. Like this is not something you do in two or three hours. Now, how many of these things did you model? How many of these things did you got like uh, from like kid bash and stuff? Um, that's going to be important. It says, it says here that all of the modeling was done in Maya, so that's quite impressive. But yeah, this is really, really cool. And this is what I like to call complexity out of simplicity. If you take a look at this piece right here, you're like, oh my God, I'm never going to be able to model something like this. But if you start breaking it down, you're going to realize that it's actually a little bit easier than you might think. So all of this like the gribble, as we like to call it, cables, pipes, and stuff like that. It's just cylinders. It's just pipes. It's just boxes with bevels and a couple of edge loops and stuff like that, I'm sure. You can see the wireframe right here. It's definitely a lot of work. Like, this is definitely not something that you do um, as easily. There we go. Oh, my God. You did one of this. Amazing. Oh, let's take a look. Look at that. Yeah. I just told my students uh, how to do this today, like how why the blocking stages is so important. This is amazing, dude. This is great. I love, I love what you did with this thing. And yeah, as you guys can see, like if, if I could stop, do we have some of this guys over here? I hope we, I, I wish I could stop some of these images, but you're going to see that the, the geometry is not as complex. It's the fact that we have so many geometries and so many things, textures, uh, the vines and everything that things make it or become so, so complex. This looks really good, man. Really freaking good. Did you win the contest? I'm not sure who else uh, participates. I'm, I'm not going to be able to say, but if you were, if I was evaluating this, this is just so, so great. Look how many iterations you did. Wow. Wow. Yeah. This is great, man. This is a, a perfect, a, a super great, super great environment. Congratulations. And look at this, guys. Like, this is what inspires me so much from our community and from, from artists everywhere. Like, our good, uh, our good friend Arian Sony did this thing last year. A lamp last year. I'm sure when he did this, he was like, this is one of the best models I've done so far. And now one year later, he does this, right? Like after I'm sure a lot of work, he was able to do this. I'm definitely going to, I'm not signing him, but I'll definitely come, I'll come back and give you a like, because this is such an amazing piece of work, man. So, so, so good. If you can, my advice for this one is try to do just the camera, like pushing in, in 3D space to create like a small little render. Five seconds, five seconds of just the camera pushing in and mwah, chef's kiss. That's going to be amazing for your uh, for your portfolio. Let's take a look at some of your work in progress. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think I sh you showed the, uh, you showed the, yeah, you showed this one. So if you can get this thing to the same level that you did the other guy, you do that one more time. If you if you can publish three, uh, three environments with that level, and I'm sure you're going to get a job at the, at the industry that you're looking for, because it's, it's just such a good, uh, such a good um, level. So yeah, yeah, keep going, man. You have great talent and, uh, and it definitely shows that you know how to do your stuff. Make sure to keep going. Very well, let's continue now with uh, Harsh. And uh, let's take a look at the text first. 
Hello, Abraham. First of all, I just want to let you know that I started your recent course on Udemy Advanced Series Character Creation. That's great. Loving it so far. So it's one of my uh, favorite ones. Um, uh, I, I always try, of course, to, to deliver the best possible courses, which you guys can ch check in Skillshare, by the way. But uh, yeah, that one, I, I really enjoy doing that. And I'm really enjoying it doing the next part. I'm working on it right now. And that's, um, oh, you guys are going to like it. Uh, here's my portfolio. I want to get your opinion on what field I should focus more on in terms of whether I should learn more towards environment design or character design. What has more value in the industry and are there any advantages of streamlining the focus? I've talked about this before. Usually, if you're if the industry where you are is a small 3D industry, you, you are going to be better off being a generalist. If you are on a more uh, like focused or a more specialized uh, industry, like in in Los Angeles, in, in Canada, in, in the UK, stuff like that, then you probably are gonna be better off if you specialize like really strongly in one particular area. You're probably gonna be jumping from studio to studio depending on how projects move. But yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's how it works. Lastly, I also have some images of my recent projects that I'm currently working on. I would love to get your input on those. Let's take a look at this ones first. So cupboard, very dark. Let's get some light in because I can't see anything. <laughs> um, yeah, we definitely need more light on this ones, my friend. I understand what you're going for. I, I do know that you want to go for this very um, like noir. Like this one looks a lot better. Very nice. This one looks very nice. But I still I will add a little bit more li light, just a little bit more light. Very easy way to do this is to add just like a... Uh, if you can't get enough light from like the HDRI or from stuff like that, just add a point light on the center of the room and make it really, really, really soft or on the top of the room or maybe some even on the windows. And that way you, you push more light into the scene so that we don't get this super hard shadows. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a good scene. Let's take a look at this one now. Okay, okay. Nice. Uh, I can see some really good ones and some ones that I would definitely recommend you take out. <laughs> so this Oni mask, this guy, like this first four, I would probably take them out. I don't think they should be here um, because they're not as finished. They're just more like exercises or studies and they do have some issues like this torture right here. There's a couple of anatomy issues. I really like this guy though. This could work for like the competition that we're doing right now if you, if you, uh, if you finish it. Uh, that, that's a fun one, but it's still, I, I would probably take those out. The barrels are fine. This guy's, again, I'll probably move them. Did this thing shift? Kind of shifted. Uh, the rooms are fine. I like the isometric rooms. There's there's um, there's value in those. I like this one. It looks interesting. I really like this thing right here, like the, the mosaic thing. The blood looks a little bit weird. Kind of looks like stretched, so I'll probably be careful on that one. This looks interesting. Unity. Okay, I don't use Unity. They definitely look like game-ish, a little bit old on the game side of things. I'll probably take that one out as well. I think you are really good at environments. Uh, if you were asking characters or environments, I really like your environment stuff. You you have an eye for for interesting compositions because I, I can see the scenes and, and I know you're telling a story, which is always important, especially for environment artists. It's very important to tell a story. Even this one, it seems like a very like easy render, but just the way you're, you're framing and, and doing the composition, this is really, really good. Um, it's a little bit high on polygons for games. Well, it depends on the game, of course, but uh, this is great. Ooh, that's a nice effect. I love that. Nice. Yeah, so I, I think if you were to ask me where I would, like, guide you with your skill set, I would definitely guide you towards environments because this one that you are preparing on this side, like this one right here, once it's finished with the textures and everything, I think it's going to look amazing. So keep pushing for that one because that's a great, great piece. Let's go now with uh, Susanta Karmakar. Um, hello, sir. I'm Susanta Karmakar from India. I learned a lot of things from your videos. My portfolio is not complete. It's learning. Please review and give me feedback. There we go. Let's take a look. Nice. I love robots. This is a perfect example. If you guys are watching this and you're still working on your portfolio, doing this sort of, this sort of stuff, like small concept from robots, is really, really... It's a really good way to get into like the, the production mindset because you can create a complete piece that's functional and that looks very, very nice. I love this little guy. It looks really good, man. How many textures are you using? One? So it's like a one 4K texture. Perfect resolution. Great, great like clay render here. This is the way to present things, by the way, guys. Like clean renders, clean compositions clean light like look how nicely lit this guy is three point lights or probably something similar to that not overexposed not underexposed look at the details on the on the metal edge wear and everything it looks really really good 
really 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 good i love this one um now this one i think we lose a little bit and the reason why we're losing a little bit is because the foreground which is the the place where this character is right now is really good but there's no background so best advice here either comp in like do a picture just have a picture to give more depth to the image or just add more of this stuff add a couple more trees add more trunks more grass just fill in the scene because it is a really nice scene but having this empty background here no silhouettes no no sky no nothing it really like takes away from the whole thing um so i think that the environment is fine but the, the background we need more more background wow this is great man Great render, dude. Super clean. Is this... Are you using displacement and stuff? Yeah, you're using height map. Yeah, definitely, right? Like, all of these little things that you're seeing here, that, um, that, that our friend, uh, Mayakul... Mayakul? No, sorry, Karma Car. Uh, all of these things that uh, Karma Car are, uh, is using uh, make it this super, super amazing. Like, the height map is, is just great it's definitely for cinematics like this this wouldn't uh work on um on a um, on the game of course it's, it's way too much how many textures are you using because i'm also impressed by the textures it seems uh, I'm, I'm i'm really impressed that you're doing the textures only in photoshop to be honest like that's that's quite impressive but i'm i'm wondering how many maps do you have for the textures like is it a 4k map is it a is it a like two or three 4k maps like how many are you using because the quality is just amazing dude this is great you're in, you're inspiring me to do something like this because that's a great exercise oof 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 nice i've seen this plugin before the the one for the webs that's really cool i actually like this this one way more like this this shot right here it looks like a photograph it looks amazing this one looks a little bit too dusty too too it kind of looks like a clay render this one looks just great. Yeah, man, congratulations. Like, just, just keep doing more of these pieces and, and you're going to be great. I can see that your your main, like, focus right now is, like, prop or, or objects, like uh, mechanical stuff, hard surface stuff. That's great. We need more stuff because right now this, I would count them as two. It's the robot and the environment, the handle and the environment. I, I think it would be good if you have, like, at least, like, what you're doing here, like, three more things, like, the object and the environment with three more things, and your portfolio is going to be, I would say, complete, like, uh, you, you you could even get jobs with this right now, to be honest, you have the level, but, um, but it's always good to have a, a couple more pieces, that's great, my friend, congratulations. Let's go now with uh, Kaznech. Hello, Abraham. Thanks for all the videos on YouTube and the amazing courses. Your videos helped me a lot in getting into the 3D industry. Nice. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I used to model props without going more towards creating characters. Any tips on the character art journey will help me a lot. Let's take a look. Achilles Niji. Nice. Okay. So you did mention, I, I think, have we seen your portfolio before? I feel like I've seen some of these pieces. So prop wise, yeah, as you mentioned, you, you're really, really good at the at the prop section. I think it's it looks nice. All of this guys. Let's take a look at the at the characters since that's one of that was one of the main focuses. Uh, anatomy wise, this guy needs a little bit more flesh uh, to it. There, he has like no body fat, and that makes it look a little bit um, uh, weird. I applaud the fact that you were able to rig it. I, I guess this is probably like an auto rig or something, um, which is fine. It's it's perfectly valid to do that. As a character artist, you're not expected to do the riggings as well. It, it's way too much time. Um, but yeah, like there's a couple of anatomy things here. Like this is well, like way, 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 way too defined, and we need to make it look a little bit more natural. I, I can see that you know where the stuff is, like the moss and the main proportions but we need to work a little bit better there also here topology wise there's a couple of loops that i think we're missing but it doesn't look that bad i would need to see a, a close-up of the of the face to see if the topology is there this looks a little bit better i can see that you're improving like the arm looks way way more natural face looks a little bit older but now some of the proportions are a little bit off like the feet look a little bit too big and uh, there, there needs to be a little bit more definition there on the ankles they look a little bit too too wide um i like the face and now i think another thing that you might be benefiting from is uh better texturing work on the skin because it looks a little bit flat same thing here on the shoulders i'll probably push the shoulders a little bit higher it's very common i don't know why this happens but we tend to do this very like long line and shoulders as you can see right here they go here and they go out and then they go down so so it's neck uh trapecius shoulders and then shoulders down and people tend to just like combine all of that into a single line and that makes for 
Uh, it, it makes the shoulders look a little bit weak. I like the props. I love all of the props. The katana looks good. Everything else looks good. It will be interesting to see if you can rig this one, and it will be great to see a wire. Oh, that we, we do have a wireframe. Okay, you don't really need to. <laughs> you don't really need to loop the the um, the nipple. Uh, usually, the nipple is baked on the normal map, and that's fine. But that's uh, this works. This works okay. Yeah, this is this is perfectly fine. It's a little bit dense on the on the hand here on the um, on the cloth. I think we might be missing. I like to add. I personally like to add the sort of like a. Uh, a Superman uh, um, like uh, underwear to to get the proper deformation on the legs, but I know that this is perfectly bad as well. Nice simplification there on the topology, but again the foot look a little bit weird. I think you're you're on a, on a good path. Again, I would probably recommend the the character that I did, the demon character, the new one. Uh, the advanced character creation, because we do cover anatomy quite a bit on that one, uh, and I think you could benefit from that one. But you're in a good stage. Do a female character as well. That would be my advice. Try doing a female character, because that's a, that's a tricky one. The female characters tend to be quite tricky as well. Uh, let's go over here. And finally, we are missing Dejari. Dej my name is Dejar Dirash. Dirash. First of all, I want to ask, say, I want to say thank you for your amazing teaching and precious content. Your videos always encourage me a lot. I'm a student. I'm in the process of making a better portfolio. It would be so helpful if you tell me how can I how can I add more value to my work to create a strong portfolio. Let's take a look. Oh, that's nice, dude. You should definitely like compete on the on the like the concept or the contest that we're doing right now for a whimsical character. And this looks really cool. I like this guy. And you did follow the concept quite nicely, so that's great. Careful with the with the empty space that you have there beneath the helmet, because on the concept you don't see that. So I would definitely make the that thing right there. Like just make it like thicker, so that it touches. It, even if you have a little bit of overlap, overlap is perfectly fine. Some people are really scared about overlap, but it's it's perfectly fine. You did miss the slime thing here, the green slime. I would definitely add it, a separate mesh probably to be able to to remove it. But everything else looks really nice. I like that one. That's a nice project. This one's also a cool project. You usually don't model the characters in this pose. Like, um, I know that you sculpted this in pose and then just rendered this. It's a good one. It's an interesting one. Really creative, I would say. Really nice control on your on your anatomy. I, I like the definition that you were able to give the muscles. It's a cool character. This one, I think the best way you can get more value out of this one is bring it back to the it's like basic pose like the the t pose or the equivalent of a t pose and try to rig it and see if you can do like an idle animation that would that would really add a lot of value to that one because i, I think that's a good one as well fat zombie nice 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 i like this one as well not bad not bad yeah, uh, a little bit weak on the on the foot as well. Foots are are tricky, uh, and they're boring. That's the problem, or at least I find them boring. Your topology here is great. Yeah, that's what that works perfectly fine. Sculpting is not bad. I'll probably add some just like damaged cloths or something. It's not it's not very common to have the the genitals exposed. I'm not sure if that's the genitals or not, but it looks a little bit weird. Okay, here's the here's an interesting thing about this one. So um, I can see here that you're using UDIMs, and for those of you that, are, that don't know what UDIMs are, UDIMs are a way to create your uh, textures, which give you a lot of resolution. This is a huge amount of resolution that you have right here. You have 15 maps. I'm guessing it's either 2K or 4K maps. I, I don't see the information here, but it's 15 maps of resolution, which tells me that we definitely need to improve the texturing, okay? It's not bad, but if you have 50 maps that you can do so many more things, like it, it looks very, as you can see here on the on the head and on this area, it looks very simple, right? It just looks like skin. And if I take a look at the, at the concept, which you added all, all the way down here, look at how much complexity there is on the texture, the tones, the way that we see the veins, all of the stains here. Like we can definitely, definitely push this guy even further with uh, with how much amount of of udems you have like this is this is too too many udems or oh sorry 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 my bad it's just five udems right it's five udems here but even here you can see how how like I, I don't want to say bland but how empty this area looks compared to other areas so make sure to bring to to really utilize if you're using this many udems 
like really push the the amount of detail that you can get because it's it's going to be really important for the whole process but it's a good sculpture i like your anatomy it's definitely stylized it's not super realistic but everything seems to be in place uh and yeah like this this looks good even this render like i really like this render i normally like to add a floor to my renders i don't like having floating characters like this because i feel like without ground like this it, it grounds the characters it makes it look a little bit more real uh, you might want to try like doing a couple of these renders with a, a floor plane similar to what you have right here. I think that might help a little bit, but it's a it's a really good project, man. Uh, and yeah, I mean you have you had good stuff. The next step is uh, add more. <laughs> we need to add more. We need to have like four or five of this. I can definitely tell that your style is stylized, like cartoonish, uh, which is great. Again, try to do a male character, try to do a female character, try to do a cute character, like a cute dog, like you have the evil dog, try to do like a cute one, try to do like an old dude, try to do like a kid, like having like that sort of range on your portfolio, like being able to do all types of characters and, and creatures, that's what's going to separate you from the from the rest of the, of the competition. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I would like to again thank thank everyone. It's it's a great great stuff right here. Thank you for for submitting your portfolio. If you didn't get a chance to submit this time around, don't worry. There's gonna be a new portfolio on February. I'm actually gonna rename this. I'm gonna rename this February. And as soon as I get the thumbnail image from one of you guys, I'm going to delete all of this, guys, so that new people can start submitting for next month. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And also, if you want to check any of our courses, remember that we have the Epic Bundle available only through January. And we also have the Skillshare promo. So free trial in Skillshare down here on the links. I will see you back on Monday, my friends, for our live stream. Remember, 9 a.m. Mexico time, 9 p.m. India time. So stay tuned. Make sure to, to add it to your calendars. Thank you for staying for this uh, 50, 40, 60 minutes. And uh, I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.